Well, today we're launching our air multiplier. It's a fan, but the most noticeable thing is that it has no fan blades, and it doesn't have the disadvantages of a fan blade. What the fan blade does is to chop the air up as it's sending the air towards you. Each blade sends a slice of air towards you. And what you feel is a turbulent, almost slapping from the airflow. Now, what this fan does is to take a small amount of air in here and shoot it out through this slot that's going all the way around here, which is a 1.3 millimeter wide slot. And the fan shape, which I'll explain in a minute, draws in air and multiplies the airflow that's going in there by about 16 times. So the amount of actual airflow you're getting is the same as you'd get with a fan with blades, except that it's smooth. It's like a smooth wind, a nice gentle breeze blowing at you, rather than the rough buffeting that's rather uncomfortable in front of a bladed fan. Uh, now I'll explain how it works. And I'll have a cut through section to show that. Now the air comes in at the bottom here and goes through this um, mixed flow impeller, which gives high pressure and high flow. And the air comes out of this little slot here. Can you see that? Um, and it goes over this aircraft wing shape. Uh, and that, if I can explain how that works, the air is rushing along. And the air can go straight underneath the flat bottom. It doesn't resist it at all. But if it goes over the top, it creates an area of negative pressure because the air is having to accelerate over a curve. And that's what makes an aircraft wing lift. Now, in this case, what it does is create negative pressure. And the negative pressure sucks in air from here. So it's already multiplying itself. And then it goes down an expanding cone. As it goes down the expanding cone, it expands and creates a negative pressure here. So it adds more air coming through here. So we've already multiplied it several times already. And then as it exits as a cylinder of, of air, breeze coming at you, you add more air through something called viscous shearing. So there are three ways from this aircraft shape here, wing shape here, the expanding cone, and then the viscous shearing that occurs here multiplies the air from 1 to 16 times. So you get 16 times the original airflow that was going through here. And the advantages are that you don't get the buffeting that you get with a normal fan. It's just a nice, cool breeze. It's obviously very easy to clean, unlike a conventional fan. And you can put your hand or your head through it. It's entirely safe. It's also rather nice because the center of gravity is low. So when it comes to adjusting it, you just push it into whatever position you need and it stays there and it's very stable because the center of gravity is low. And as you can see, it's oscillating and you can adjust the speed with a dimmer switch control here. And much better and much greener than air conditioning because obviously it, this is only using 40 watts whereas air conditioning is 2,500 watts. And uh, you get no sick building syndrome, especially if you open the window. So it's, it's, uh, it's a very nice way to keep you cool. So James Dyson, this is your new product. It is a uh, bladeless uh, fan. Why is this so different, and why is this? Why will this take off if it takes off? Well, at the moment, a, a fan with blades buffets you, so it's rather uncomfortable to sit in front of. Very difficult to clean, and it can cause harm if you put your mm. finger in it. You can, you know, your children can get damaged. This is dead easy to clean. I can put my hand or head through it. And it's like a breeze, it doesn't buffet you. And, so you're, and you're primarily going to target this at foreign markets? No, rather no, the than British market, which I think is a very good market for it, because when it gets hot, we haven't got air conditioning, we suddenly need fans. But so this could take off as uh, well as your vacuum cleaners? Well, I hope so, I hope so. But the US market would be very big, the Japanese, Australian market. Now, you spoke at the Tory party conference, and there's been a lot of talk about uh, high-profile figures joining the Conservatives. Are you actually going to join a Conservative government if they win the election? What I'm interested in doing is promoting technology and science in Britain, both in education and in business, because we have a terrible balance of payments problem. Um, we're not developing new technology in Britain now. All our competitive countries are overtaking us. And we can reverse that. We're tremendously inventive in Britain. We, you know, we did radar, the computer, the jet engine, and so on. But why aren't we doing that now? We could be at the forefront of all these advances and have the huge cultural interest in technology and the financial benefits that follow. But 
you want to promote this and help this, but will you do that within government? I mean, if you were asked to sit in the House of Lords, would you take a seat? I'll do whatever I can to promote technology, design and engineering in Britain, because I think it's terribly important for us. That sounds like a yes. I'll do what I can, w w in whatever way, to promote it, because I love the subject. I think it's terribly important for our culture and our children. Our children love science and technology, but they don't go on to pursue it as a career. And, and uh, I think that's a huge shame. And has enough been done over the last 10 years to promote engineering? Uh, some has been done, but we need to take much more radical steps because we need to create the numbers. You know, we, we have 60,000 engineering vacancies in Britain at the moment, and we produce 20,000 engineering graduates. It's just not enough. So either we've got to encourage our own children to take up science and technology, or we must keep the foreign students who studied engineering and science here in Britain. We shouldn't expel them and not give them a visa as soon as they finish their education. We need them here. We should keep them.